biotechnology our today's presenter is dr sm bhat his expertise in bioprocessing agri waste biofuel generation spawn development mushroom and plant tissue culture dr sm bhat is having three patents two international authored books and more than 40 international publications he has worked as deputy director of research at sant baba bhag singh university associate professor in lpu and currently he is working as assist, uh, associate professor in amritsar college of engineering and technology we are honored to have him among us sir thank you so much for organizing such a valuable ft program now thank i would you, like to call upon dr sm bhat to please continue with your presentation thank you sir thank you so much ma'am so audience uh, students faculty of our department ecc uh, and i welcome all of you on behalf of agriculture department ecc mm -hmm. all right i would like to thank all of you to participate and to learn something new and uh, we have this uh, six days program and my today's topic is gmo food in indian scenario all uh, we have heard a lot about the uh, gmo food right so this what is the gmo food i think uh, uh, anyone uh, know about this what is gmo food sir <laughs> genetically modified ha ah, genetically modified food so what is the impact how this is prepared and what is the status of gm crops in india i will uh, discuss you shortly uh, earlier because uh, a lot of discussion we are going on about uh, the population and the feeding and ha hungry people so i was uh, just looking for the hunger index in india so uh, i was surprised that uh, this is uh, going high worldwide okay so Uh, i can show you the what is the hunger index over worldwide and why we need the, the gmo different type of gmo so uh, this is the world population you can see what population is going to increase very rapidly that's why this is the world used population explosion right and uh, this is the data estimated data of 2016 and uh, then you can see we are in 2020 around 7 billion will be the world population and up to 2050 it will be more than 9 billion so if you see the global hunger index this is going to be very alarming uh, uh, in a uh, few years and this is the top 10 country uh, you can see here top 10 country in which uh, niger liberia sudan yemen this is the hunger index ranking and india you will surprise you know india is also having the rank around 100 so there is no uh, much difference between 100 11 110 and 100 right so a lot of people a lot of children a lot of young people a lot of population is going to die because of because of food is scarcity food is not available so this is called as the global hunger index and you can see this data this data this is low if this is 9 and if this is between 10 to 19 this is a uh, moderate and if you will see uh, uh, between 20 to 34 this is going to be some something serious and uh, extremely alarming if greater than 50 so you can see we are in the range of 100 right so uh, global hunger index if you see uh, what was the global hunger index in 2019 so it was 102 and now the global hunger index of 2020 is little bit more this is how much 94 so what is the alternative what we can do for that any idea what we can do uh, to meet uh, such a, a drastic condition कोई आइडिया बच्चों वट डू यू थिंक वॉट वी कैन डू वी कैन नॉट डू एनी थिंग टेल मी सो दिस वॉज दिस वॉज थॉट एज ए अल्टरनेटिव 
right? He, if we can increase, if you can increase the food by transgenic way, modifying the seeds, uh, developing new varieties, okay? So then it can be very good. So that's why it was thought he, uh, we can develop. Uh, now you can see this is the country wise score in the 2020. India ranking 94, right? Uh, scoring less than 27. So not much alarming, but uh, this is a moderately alarming. Okay. So what we can suggest, we have to work out for the more uh, quality seed production so that they can be more useful. So uh, we have to see the uh, how we can nourish, you know, how can we can nourish more population, more percentage of population. So, uh, what uh, due to this alarming hunger index, so this was thought that there should be GMO production. GMO, what is GMO? Any idea? Transgenic, uh, you have said, no? transgenic uh, production of the seeds. So, uh, you will see in the plant breeding. So plant breeding alone is not a sufficient condition because it will take much more time. So what we are doing, we are modifying the crops with the insertion of genes, right? We are modifying the crops with the insertion of genes. So we are uh, now, we have the top 10 genetically modified food now that is called as the corn, soya, right? Cotton seed, papaya, rice, rapeseed, potato, tomato, dairy product and peas. Okay. So, and uh, how this genetically modified organism is produced, if you see, this is the normal plant cell. So we just need a gene, a lot of, a large number of genes may be introduced in the normal plant cell by adopting certain uh, uh, plant disagriculture methods, right? So we can introduce this gene into the uh, plant, right? And then GM plant produces pest killing protein and it's the pest resistant, right? So uh, we can add the novel property. What, uh, what is happening? Suppose there is a plant and it's 40% uh, of the crops is destroyed by the pest and insect. Then only 60% remains. And for saving the 60%, we are adding heavy pesticides also. Right. So we are using what? Heavy pesticides. So this is a kind of also not healthy. So what we are doing, we are preparing, we are preparing uh, this uh, transgenic variety. Okay. So uh, these uh, genes can be isolated from any other species other than the plant. That's, that's why this is called as the trans. Trans means other species. Okay. So if you are isolating the gene from other species like bacteria, like uh, fungus, like uh, any animals, right? Uh, for example, Bt cotton. You know, Bt cotton was prepared uh, by inserting the genes from Bacillus thuringiensis bacteria. So now you can see various kind of property can be introduced by inserting the genes. For example, uh, if you want to uh, uh, enhance the root growth, then these genes are responsible and you can transfer these genes to the plants, right? So SOS3, SNRK, and uh, you can control uh, their transport, water transport, iron transport, right? So uh, this uh, transport is controlled by this gene. So if a uh, plant is uh, growing in the drought area and you want to accelerate this uh, mechanism of uh, sensing and signaling in the plants. So you can isolate uh, this from this. Then this case will not be transgenic if it's isolated from the plant. Right. But still it will be called as the genetically modified food and uh, for the photosynthesis for uh, the various genes are there which, which you can exploit from the bacteria from other organisms. So by adopting genetic engineering method, we can uh, modify the plant architecture we can produce the abiotic stress uh, plant, uh, herbicide tolerance, salinity tolerance, heat tolerance, drought tolerance, right? So a lot of property we can introduce into the normal plant, which are not able to grow in the normal condition. So
So you can uh, see this uh, here in the picture. This is test resistance, disease resistance, virus resistance, right? So all this property, how we can introduce? We can introduce by we can introduce by this genetically modified uh, methods or transgenic methods or genetic engineering methods. So uh, if uh, what is abiotic is this? Uh, a lot of uh, condition, uh, environmental condition is called the abiotic condition, right? Biotic and abiotic condition. Biotic condition means uh, biotic is stress management, like insect pest, you know, disease resistant, virus resistant, right? So all these called the biotic stress. So plant are going to be have the lower yields because of both abiotic stress and biotic stress. So we have to understand both the mechanism, all right? So we are going to create uh, new plants, new seeds. Are related to herbicides that are uh, herbs uh, tolerance means a, a lot of herbs is going they are th taking the nutrients and killing the original plants crop plants salinity tolerance uh, suppose uh, some fields are there which are having high salinity okay so if high salinity is there high acidity is there uh, then we have to uh, introduce certain gene uh, we have to isolate certain gene from the wild variety or certain um, um, uh, bacteria and then we can introduce into the plants right so similarly for the heat tolerance uh, they are better tolerant these plants are better tolerant to heat and rot these are very tough conditions in which plants are going to kill so if land is there a lot of land is there and they are uh, their crop is not growing well and the yield is decreasing because of these factor abiotic stress or kind of biotic stress and this is a disaster. So uh, we cannot increase the land rather than we can increase this technical part. We cannot deny this technical part, right? So deny, uh, we cannot deny this technical part. We have to use, we have to apply. Why we have to apply this technical part? Because uh, this technology can boost and they can help in various technical aspects, right? So uh, ultimately, uh, what, what is the meaning of this discussion? Meaning of this discussion is that we have to find out that uh, many of the government or many of the people, many of the agency are saying that uh, GMO is a curse. GMO should not apply. GMO seed should not be sown in the field, right? So is it true? So we have to analyze today by discussion. Is this uh, true or not? What we can do? Okay. So this is not true because a lot of additional things are going to be involved that is going to save for example we are creating insect pest resistant plant so we have not to use the herbicide we have not to put our money in um, additional uh, insecticide pesticide right or uh, if the plant is disease resistant already we have not to uh, care of the uh, microbe will be destroyed by any kind of disease or mostly you can see plants are destroyed by the viruses so that also can be controlled okay so uh, what is the benefit this is the benefit of uh, transgenic technology that you can develop a lot of varieties of the uh, properties in, inside the seed and similarly can be introduced for the ornamental crops and also uh, can enhance the fruit quality for increasing shelf life for example tomato papaya all these are the uh, uh, different uh, kind of uh, crops, perishable crops, which are going to be destroyed very soon because of ripening. Their self life is very, very less. So now uh, what we can do, we can also utilize this genetic engineering technology that can enhance uh, fruit quality for increased self life and reduce post harvest losses. What is the post harvest losses? Means crop is ready, now we want to sell it, but we need time. And if, uh, suppose, a tomato is there, and tomato is 100 ton, and it's uh, having a longer shelf life, means it can sustain for a month, at least two months, six months. So we are increasing the shelf life. So if we are increasing shelf life, so what we, we can store them. We can store them, we can sell them at high price. So the farmer is not going to lose their money, because a lot of, a lot of labor cost is involved, a lot of time is involved, a lot of money is involved, right? and uh, how difficult is the farming. So genome editing technology, for example, in US currently, you will see there is a current technology CRISPR-Cas9, which is going to utilize 
for the genome editing in the various horticulture crop to improve this enhanced uh, self life are kind of in, uh, increasing uh, base life in ornamental crops so all these are commercial purpose if you are talking about the commercial cropping then i think genetic engineering is a kind of boon okay so uh, as you know uh, this concept of better crops is started from the darwin and darwin uh, was uh, always supporting this concept that whatever the desirable and better traits are there they should be selected and they should be progressed further this is the also concept of breeding what we call them as a genetic breeding genetic breeding means a selected crop based on their traits good crops are selected and then they are propagated for the next lines right so similarly we are um, uh, developing the better lines better lines and this is very time taking this can take from uh, 3 years to 12 years right so uh, this is kind of very rapid technology uh, transgenic technology because we are utilizing the same concept uh, there is a nucleotide double helix and then chromatin and chromosome formation and gene where is the gene you can see nucleus contains the chromosome and chromosome contains the genes or dna all right so we can utilize this gene technology we can isolate the, the gene from any any bacteria or any kind of uh, other animals which have the desirable desirable property that can uh, be introduced into the normal plant cell and they become the genetically modified because they are carrying the bacterial gene so this new gene enables the genetically modified cell to produce pest killing properties so what you can see gm plant which is pest killing protein and thus is a pest resistant okay so you will see there is a continuous effort uh, for uh, uh, developing uh, different uh, steps in the uh, different advancement are there in the genetically modified uh, crops right so in 1946 you can see scientists discover genetic material and 1973 1954 discovery of dna right uh, discovery of central dogma uh, and then 1973 first dna recombination right and then 1983 first gm plants tobacco vitamin and successfully created uh, 1990 china became first country to commercialize gm crops in 1994 first fda approved gm crops for human use was the flavor saver tomato and uh, 1996 2017 you can see the current era of gm crops right so all these are the developments and now you can see almost 10 crops corn soya cotton seed papaya rice grapes potato tomato dairy crops peas uh, are being uh, developed commercially so if you see the historical timeline so what is the first crop that was introduced as gmo and was accepted by the fda also for human use what is the fda this is the us agency right food development authority and uh, that is uh, authorized to get the license you know? authorized to check uh, before releasing that variety into the for the human use they have been for example uh, for the corona vaccine clinical trial were there similarly for the gmo food before releasing to the human use they are being uh, released for the trials they have a, uh, they should not have any uh, negative impact over the health of the human uh, or the children among the adults among the older among the ladies uh, so they should not have any kind of uh, health impact a negative health impact on the field also in the environment also right so there is a fda Uh, and if you see uh, as the, the time is going on more than 20 crops now have been approved for the commercial cultivation in different countries and only four crops being marketed commercially corn cotton so have been canola you know the uh, biggest producer of the cotton is india right a lot of cotton is uh, being produced in the india and india is number one in the cotton production so if you will see the commercial production a lot of commercial production has been initiated in the usa but not in other countries you know usa has a proper regulatory authority people are very aware and huh? people are not cheater they are not um, uh, doing politics so uh, here in every uh, every second every point every developmental part there is a politics that's why the india is 70 years back from all over the countries because we Uh, have learned a lot of politics we have we don't know scientists we hate scientists we do not accept science and if you accept the scientists you will find no support from the 
any other part, very less support. But still people are doing their effort. In major countries uh, for the acceptance in the GMO production and utilization and commercialization in USA, Canada, Japan, China, and even the India. India has accepted only very few crops. Brazil, EU, Argentina, South Africa. Okay. So a lot of confusion is there in the India about the use of so you can see the ratio of what, what is the percentage of GMO seeds that have been used by the Indians and this is the 6.3 percent only China using only 2.3 percent other countries only 8.3 percent you say this is the largest largest um, agricultural land have been used for the GMO production that is 40 0.8 percent and Argentina you can see 14.3 percent, Canada 6.8 percent, Brazil 21.4 percent, right? So this is the world total agricultural land under the GM. Only uh, this is 3.4 percent as compared to 96.6 percent. This shows that still uh, many part of the world, many uh, public, among the public, this is a very less accepted because uh, they have a uh, one or other kind of fear, all right. So um, this is the conceptual part of the uh, adopting GMO, developing the transgenics, adopting the GMO, and this is the traditional crossbreeding which is taking too much time. And you can see by the mutagenesis you can create better varieties, but it is also we are not sure okay, it is not going to revert back in the next generation, but it's by a gene editing. Uh, for example, currently, uh, this is the best technology scientists have developed, that is the CRISPR-Cas9, uh, which can uh, remove uh, a very single part of the gene, uh, right, that is not uh, desired. So, you can uh, have a better chances of developing a better variety. So, all type of GMO are not produced in the same way, they are produced in a different way. So, we have to see what are the uh, different ways and for what purpose they have been produced and which laboratory uh, they have been produced. So, a lot of development has been done and a lot of commercial player, uh, for example, Calgen ESC become the first ever uh, food and drug administration approved GM plan for human consumption, right? So, India is using a pre approved plant that is corn, maize, cotton, potato, Vt cotton, very common, no? Vt potato, also very common, Vt corn, Vt maize. So, what is the Vt? Vt means bacillus thuringiensis. Vt means bacillus thuringiensis gene modification, right? And if you also, if you see uh, tomato, what is the, why tomato is going to ripen? Very rapidly. So, because there is a poly, polygalacto urinase enzyme that is produced when the tomato is going to ripe. And if the tomato is going to ripe, uh, this enzyme is uh, traditionally how is it possible to plant? Uh, no, 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 no. Traditional way uh, because the enzyme activity is going on continuously. Actually, you can open your uh, right? and uh, you know. Uh, behind the tomato production ripening, this enzyme has become activated. Until then, unless you are not going to inactivate this enzyme or the polycarecto urinase enzyme, then uh, you cannot stop this ripening by any other external methods. And also, you know, ethylene hormone is the very widely accepted hormone that is uh, responsible for the ripening of various fruit and vegetables, right? So, you have to avoid that also, the ethylene should not be produced and you have to inactivate. So, scientists, uh, what they did, they inactivated uh, uh, this polycarecture unit enzyme by the antisense technology and then they find that this such kind of transgenic tomato, uh, they are very useful, they are not going to ripe easily and uh, they are going to be kept for the up to six months. So, now you can see uh, whatever the tomato is going to ripen, over ripen or they are uh, going to be destroyed easily because they have, you have to throw out these uh, excessive uh, ripened tomato because they are, now the membrane is not very hard, the membrane is very loose and uh, after all they are going to be infected by the various fungus and they are not fit for the human consumption, right? So, uh, that's why the, this is the benefit of transgenic tomato as compared to the trans-conventional tomato. Conventional tomato is, uh, is going to, 60% is going to destroy, only 40% you can consume. So, if I'm talking about the 
food hunger, hungry index, engaging population. So why the tomato is very costly? Because 60% is going to be lost during the transport, right? Because their membrane is very loose. So if membrane is very loose, then what you can see, they, they will be because of damage. Damage uh, in the tomato, they are going to uh, they are going to be infected by the a lot of fungus. You know? So that's not uh, able to that's not fit for the human consumption. So that's why the cost is very high. So you can load on the cost also. Well, nowadays people are saying the cost is very mangai bhot agi. So why this is a mangai? This is because of a lot of uh, post harvest management. People are not able to control this, and even you know we have we are among the poor countries, developed countries, right? So we don't have much fund and uh, a lot of enemies of India is there. So ultimately you have to adopt the science. Otherwise, if 60% every season is going to destroy, then what you can expect means uh, this is multiplied uh, alternatively into three months, right? So you can see the 150 times uh, food is going to be destroyed. Similarly, uh, canola. Canola is a very highly useful oil and uh, can adopt this technology, transgenic technology to increase oil production and um, a lot of insect, pest and fungus is going to destroy the crops. So um, the scientists thought that if the toxic gene from bacillus thuringiensis is going to be attached in the plant cells, then they are uh, going to use less uh, pesticide, insecticide and they will be safe also, they will have the uh, higher size of the food also. Right? So cotton, if you see, uh, this is a ball worm disease, ball, ball worm, um, uh, insect is there, that's going to destroy the cotton. So the Bt cotton was introduced and a lot of, a uh, lot of rise in food production, a lot of cotton uh, production was uh, reported. Okay, so now currently GM crop has been extended to other food waste species, not limited to that uh, Bt cotton or Bt canola or BT corn or BT yeast, right? Uh, they have been uh, expanded to uh, uh, fruit, vegetable, cereal, lettuce, strawberry, a plant, selective, rice, wheat, carrots, right? So also uh, now there is a third generation uh, GM crops. I can show you third generation GM crops. This is the first generation. Uh, only target was to enhance crop productivity and introduction of certain traits okay? like herbicide tolerant, better insect tolerant, better tolerant to environment, right? And, but uh, this was uh, limited up to corn, so I have see, but uh, this is second generation. The concerned product uh, quality characteristics which have better taste, more nutritional content and have longer supply, example flavor, savor, tomato and product. Now you can see the third generation. Third generation means, uh, for example, uh, you can introduce the gene for the vaccine production or for a certain vitamin A production of, uh, or, for example, medicinal gene. For example, uh, milk with antithrombin. Milk with antithrombin. This is possible to produce now because of third generation transgenics. Right? So therapeutic protein. These are called the therapeutic protein. And such crop are called as the Pharma crops. Such crops are called as a pharma crops, right? So a lot of uh, cheaper technology is there uh, to make the cost cheaper, a therapeutic market. And now you can uh, introduce this gene, and this is also transgenic, transgenic uh, proteins. You, know? you can produce in the plants. Uh, you can produce the vaccine in the plants. You can produce antibody in the plants. You can produce the uh, uh, drugs in the plant, you know, that is called the therapeutic plant. So a lot of generation are there and uh, uh, already we have discussed the Sanger index and what is the Indian scenario. So you can see uh, agriculture is uh, very, very important uh, in Indian economy and uh, you can see more than 56.7% people are involved in the agriculture and they are dependent on the agriculture products, right? So where there is a crop, a crop losses, you can see these crop losses. This is the crop losses, 26% due to insect, 26% due to diseases, right? And 15% due to rodents and other, 
uh, date of weed. So there is a, 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 a exactly we will calculate all that. So this is uh, more than 42. Uh, 60 percent of the losses, overall losses because of disease, insect, weed, aerodynamics, right? Uh, so uh, we are losing at least 60,000 crore every day. So every year, every year, annually. Uh, this is the data of 2012. So you can expect we, how much we have lost till date, right? More than uh, six, uh, eight. You can multiply by eight. So this is more than more than um, five lakh crores. Okay, this is more than five lakh crores. So we can save this. We are adopting this technology. We can save this, and also we are going to lose our crops because of the uh, climate change. You know? If the climate is going to change, uh, then there is also kind of loss, right? We are going to have a loss in the crops. And uh, also because of seasonal change, insect is going to rise up to 25% because of temperature, because we are living in the temperate zone, right? So uh, uh, what we can see according to the data, post-harvest losses count for 10% because of weed, 14%, how much? This is 24. And 13% uh, uh, by thousand, this is around 37, right? 37%. And 15% inside. So 37 and then uh, 10, 47 and then 5. This is around 52%, right? So this is around 56% loss. And 56%, this is a loss. Uh, and this is uh, not only happening in the India, this is worldwide scenario, right? This is the worldwide uh, crop loss scenario. So if you see the consumption of pesticide, how heavily. The pesticide have been used. Okay, okay. So, now you see pesticide uh, consumption of pesticide uh, state wise, right? What you can say, this is state wise loss is there. Okay, Maharashtra using the pesticide 30%, 13%, Punjab 11%, uh, MP 8%, Karnataka 79%, Gujarat 7%, Arjuna 5%, West Bengal 5%, others 15%, right? AP in Telangana 24%, Tamil Nadu 5%. Okay. So this is a kind of uh, consumption of pesticide in the world. So what is the herbicide is mostly used in the world. 43% of the herbicide and 31% uh, insecticide, 21% fungicide and 5% other kind of chemical pesticide. Right? These are the chemical pesticides which is also very dangerous to health and consumption of pesticide in India. Right, you can see 75 percent means maximum people below believe that are that they are using the chemical pesticide. Uh, right, so you can see the various harmful uh, impact over the health. Right, inhalation, uh, respiratory effect, central nervous system, eye irritation, hormonal imbalance, uh, cancer, liver damage, skin irritation, respiratory effect, chronic exposure, acute exposure, absorption through skin. A lot of lot of uh, effect you can see uh, among the children. Uh, not only the children, uh, the whole ecosystem is going to be uh, damaged. For example, you can see these chemical pesticides are not going to be destroyed or consumed in the ecosystem easily. Uh, rather than they are going to be part of your water bodies in the river, and they are going to waste the water resources and uh, uh, mixed uh, soil permanently. So they are not degraded. They become the part of the soil. That's why uh, currently we are talking about the organic farming because if you are using the organic, these uh, uh, chemicals are going to uh, make uh, whatever the salts are there, whatever the minerals are there in the soil. They become in salt, but they are not going to apply the plant easily. So if you are using uh, at least out for 10 years, we are using the pesticide and chemicals, they are having a damaging effect to the soils and aquatic bodies. Right, and because of the rainfall, all this environment is full of pesticide. Whatever today we are eating, why we have a lot of corona effect, corona death? Because what we are eating, we are not eating the uh, vitamins, we are not eating the nutrients, we are eating the chemicals. We are eating what? Chemicals, pesticides. So we should, uh, how we, we are going to save from these effects? So we have to grow 
all the things in organic way. So uh, we should make aware and that, uh, and also you can see uh, the Indians are talking a lot, doing less. This is the philosophy of the, all the Indians. Uh, it may be students, it may be professor, it may be scientist, uh, and the politicians never want to work uh, rather than they are the part of mismanagement because there is a no qualification of the, they are for every million on this post. So this is digressing to know that whatever the food has been collected at lower cost from the farmers, they are degrading, they are not utilized properly. And other than all the these grains are going to uh, going to destroy it because of uh, because of uh, infection of the pathogens attack by the pathogens rottening and uh, rottening law. So these are not available to the hungry people, right? That's why mismanagement is also a part of. And also, uh, I want to show you this is the approved transgenic horticulture crops by the FDA uh, for the apple, PGS, PGS gene, modify the product quality, being viral disease resistant, AC1, eggplant, uh, leptopterian, insect resistant, cry one AC, and for the male, you can see delayed ripening, senescence, and K, papaya, you can see viral disease resistant, uh, CP, PRS, RV, gene, plum, PPBC, viral disease resistant against viral disease resistant, Pareto, Cry3, PVYCP, this is again the collectorial insectation, uh, squares, you can see CMBCP, ZYMBCP, fat, uh, in the sugar beet, uh, again the traitor, glyphosinate, herbicide tolerance, sweet pepper, uh, CMBCP, barotinine waste, and tomato, you can see MTE, sand, PPC, sensor antisense, PCC, ACC, PZ, sensor antisense, right? And then you can see what this property can be doing the tomato like delayed ripening, senescence, uh, like dotarian, insect rest and delayed food softening, right? So this is the scenario of the approved gene and, uh, and now this is the common practice that if you want to, that's why we are listening a lot about the hybrid variety, hybrid variety is doing good, hybrid variety has a larger size and a fruit size, vegetable size, larger weight, you know, so all this because of this genetic engineering. Genetic engineering. So now you can see uh, what is the effect uh, of TPS gene introduction in the Pareto, uh, now the drought tolerance, if you are not supplying the water, they are not going to stop growing, right? So these varieties are recommended to use in the field. Uh, for example, uh, OSM by BF4 gene to use in that well to enhance the dot uh, stress capability, CBF1 in the tomato, right? Of course, to increase the oxidative stress, it is water toxin, uh, stress tolerance in the banana, uh, right? Uh, this MUSA gene has been introduced. Uh, and the target trait is oxidative salt stress tolerance, right? So, genetic engineering is adopted not only for the moisture density stress bond, but also for the salinity tolerance. For example, you can see uh, introduction of osmotin gene in the stability, behind the salt tolerance effect, you can grow them all over the country, uh, despite of what uh, quality of soil is there, you don't have to worry. And then betaine, aldehyde, dehydrogen is there in the carrot, right? And uh, you can see mm, salt tartar properties. Uh, you can uh, gain asmotin gene in the capsicum, right? And then uh, uh, SLM BP11 gene in the tomato for the salt tolerance, right? So genetic engineering for the uh, Mm, chilling uh, tolerance, chilling tolerance. The cancer uh, are going to die if you are not introducing this gene. So they had trained gene, they had DHL gene. Mm -hmm. So I think my audience is not going to be bored. Any doubt, any clear clarification you want to ask, any question, you can ask this time. Then we can start again. Yes. 
expectancy uh, that is taking link for biotic stage resistance also okay and you can introduce <coughs> uh, uh, attaching e lytic proteolysis e cystic proteinase in the apple and uh, then you can see there will be no fire fight disease among the apples and grape anti-freezing protein low temperature tolerance because grape is destroyed by the low temperature pineapple kidneys ap24 gene have been uh, introduced square score protein gene have been introduced right cmb zymb wmb and then you can see heart and root rot disease it is score protein right uh, in the lettuce and that is going to save them against the uh, mirror fire lettuce virus right so and now you can see the area total area that have been occupied in 2017 you can see here this was 189 hectare right and uh, acre this was a 469 acre this is the global area biotic crops right and the collection started from the 1996 data to 2017 right and you can see in the every year this area of cropping is going to enhance and the total it becomes 2339 hectare and in acres this is around 5780 acres right so this is constantly arising every this is equivalent to rise of 3% every year. Okay, so biotech crops in industrialized and developing country, you can see in the in, in, in industrialized country, for example, USA, Canada, or this advanced country, you can see in 2016 was 85, right? Uh, and this was the 46% of the total land, and in developing country, around 54%. And you can see in 2017, this was a, a equal in the developing country means not enhanced and in the just lies country it was also uh, one percent uh, rise so almost uh, four uh, aggregate uh, you can see this was a four percent rise in the uh, total area that was occupied that was used for the gmo production so this is the top 10 crop countries that have been uh, producing and focusing a lot the largest producer is usa right you can see this usa 75 million hectare and Brazil 50.2 million hectare and then you can see the Argentina third one 23.6 million hectare Canada 13.1 India only 11.4 but people are uh, young people are being more aware they are adopting this technology and uh, they are increasing their participation in the growing GMO force Paraguay 3 million only especially you can see all over the India is uh, full of uh, GMO corn, what we are getting in the cinema hall and <laughs> all these are the GMO corn. So we are eating already, we are consuming without any information, we are uh, being, so Pakistan only 3 million, China 2.8 million, very less and South Africa very less, Bolivia uh, 1.3 very very less. So what you can see India is uh, basically uh, growing only the 11 crops and uh, including the cotton cotton is the highest rank and yes same is we have been cotton canola sugar vital for largest largest uh, producer of this uh, uh, gmo crops right so what are the status of organic farmers organic farmers uh, organic farmland 2019 in the worldwide was you can see they are also increasing they are also increasing and North America 3.6, and Europe 16.5, Asia very less 5.9, Africa 2 million hectare, and 8.3 million hectare. So you can see total farm land occupied in 2019 was 3.1 million. And organic market, this was expanding and after the COVID-19, there was a very, very high demand of the organic farm based product, not chemical based product. So this is the two aspects using a lot of chemicals using GMO or using GMO with organic farming or local varieties with the organic farming right so COVID-19 has a tremendous impact in the thought of the public and all they want to have a traditional crops or traditional kind of a cropping system organic method of cropping system and India now going to produce very high number of organic producers by the organic farming you can see this is the number a very big number 
1.3 billion uh, producers may be there in the few system a few years okay so the debate is going to continue that uh, uh, is this uh, gmo should be accepted by the public or not so you can see there is a constantly new technology this is the third generation tomato third generation transgenic tomato and uh, there is a application of crispr cas9 latest technology of genome editing and uh, you know uh, there is a um, in the chilies there is a, a special gene that is capsi uh, capsicinoids which is going to give the redness right so they can be activated or they can be edited to change their flavor to change their color right so similarly the banana genetically modified banana well, banana is mostly attacked by the fusarium wilt right so to save uh, them from various kind of diseases scientists are a very startup narvi based startup is going to work on this and they have developed this transgenic banana which is uh, resistant against disease fusarium well similarly strawberry you can see they are more sweeter and more safer earlier uh, there was a report of some fungal attack some virus attack in the strawberry so people were avoiding eating the strawberry but nowadays uh, because of crispr edited uh, system they are modifying making it more sweeter more safer and now you can see this is the arctic apple right so browning was the biggest problem after you are cutting the apple it becomes brown and uh, it becomes damaged so it was not uh, fit for the consumption so now this is genetically modified now after the cutting they are not going to be um, uh, change their color from uh, normal color to brown and now the genetically modified papaya this was disease this was attacked by the uh, uh, ring spot disease huh? so that was controlled that was uh, controlled by inserting a gene from the virus into the fruits genetic code that was called as the rainbow papaya that was called as the rainbow papaya now this is the largest market largest grown worldwide and this is not going to have any kind of viral attack so what we can say a uh, gmo crops are not going to Uh, now going to increase worldwide and you see the largest uh, producers and what is the uh, advantage basically of gmo food you see there is a lot of advantage for the grower as well as the consumer though there are some negative reports also we will discuss shortly and uh, for example you can see many gmo crops have been genetically modified to express a gene that protect them against the Pest and insect. We have discussed like Bt, Bg, Bt cop, cotton, Bt. So I mean Bt, Bt corn, right? So because Bacillus thuringiensis gene was there isolated and inserted into the that uh, crops, right? So this gene produces a protein that is toxic to the pest and insect. So that's why we have not to use the pesticide chemical pesticide, which is not going to be degraded even after 30 to 40 years. So that was the biggest issue, and that can be solved. and also various uh, against the various uh, pest insect disease virus you know, and a uh, lot of biotic stress lot of hepatic stress they are going to fight and not only uh, this is the fact but also we are going to produce the golden rice what is the golden rice introduction of beta carotene in the rice is high then it is called as the golden rice because they are rich in the vitamin a Right, they are rich in the vitamin. This is called the golden rice. Moreover, genetically modification may be used simply to enhance the flavor and appearance of food, such as non-browning apple. Just we have discussed shortly. So a lot of uh, things are going on, but still the question remains same: uh, Is GMO safe? So uh, there is some report regarding safety and concern that some people are. going to develop some allergy after consumption of gmo food and also some are going to have some other kind of diseases so uh, this is the uh, agencies which are going to responsible for the testing if they are uh, testing before release then there should not be any problem so what we can uh, uh, suggest that there should be strict uh, check before the release of any kind of uh, gmo right so Uh, what is the biggest crop so in the foods very less percentage you can observe but uh, of course for the soybean oil this is 50% uh, gmo seed is going to be used and the cotton for 12% india is uh, growing highest 
maize, 33 percent of course. Whatever the maize, we can uh, corn, we are eating. Now they all are, uh, we can say, uh, maximum are uh, GMO modified, uh, GMO transgenic modified. Right? So India is the largest and biggest producer of cotton, uh, and this is the estimate production. India 5.8. Uh, and then China 4.9, uh, US 3.7, Pakistan. We are the largest. We should pride of ourselves. <laughs> we are going to have a largest producer of cotton in the world. All right. So, what is the GM crop? Are they are fit? So, a lot of uh, publication you'll find in the, and then a lot of report are there. BT cotton controversy. Uh, why? Because uh, sometime after the two to three years, it was observed that okay, again the uh, insects are attacking over the Bt seeds. The Bt seeds were produced by the Monsanto company, and this was having a higher costly seed. And even if they are uh, attacked by the bone guard, then this is going to be uh, problematic. So Monsanto is going to do research again and then they revise and release third generation uh, BT cotton that is called the Bulgard Bull, 1, Bulgard 2 and Bulgard 3rd. So what is the how we can uh, inspect by GMO? There are you approved agencies that can, should uh, inspect them and uh, various techniques are there and now you can see uh, people are slowly accepting their production and they are growing and uh, India the first uh, India has approved the first transgenic crop to grow at large scale that was the BT cotton and that was a joint venture of Myco India and Monsanto. So this was the reality, a lot of, lot of uh, then uh, gene modification have been done and uh, not only uh, one, com one company is involved, larger than various companies are now involved that are leasing the uh, various hybrid variety of seeds. For example, MS uh, North seed fusion genes, uh, GK agri seeds, they are uh, producing variety of cry1 genes in the BT cotton, stacked genes uh, of uh, cry1 AC, cry1 AB by the Myco, right. So a lot of things uh, we have to discuss but since uh, uh, almost this is time to wrap up all the hmm, concept so because we have to discuss also so I have a lot of data if anyone is interested interested we can discuss it separately what is the economical aspect of GM crops on the farmer this is uh, suitable for the local condition also they are going to adjust according to the climate and they are based on this region cost of weed management cost of uh, fertilizer management cost of chemical pesticide management uh, cost of uh, uh, soil management, all that can be managed by using the uh, GM crops. And uh, since a lot of uh, improved ration variety are coming day by day, so one day we will have the full uh, control over these insect and pest and we have not to use the chemicals. That's what we are talking about in the COVID, in the aspect of COVID-19, that uh, we should eat more and more organic foods, right? And uh, uh, obviously, we have to check for the human health, environmental hazard, and uh, safety of the non-target organism, right? So, uh, obviously, there is a environmental hazard, and uh, uh, this is again the question uh, which have, we have to answer in the future. Do gym crop increases yield, and has cotton yield increased in India to the bottom, PT cotton, and has gym crop increased global food security? Uh, so all these answers we have to look for in the futures. So and again uh, this question is there which is uh, moving in the mind of uh, scientists and workers and farmers. The genetically engineered cotton to farmers society in India. So we have to see a lot of things. Here, what is the reality uh, in reality uh, in the other country as compared to India. Uh, and uh, also there was initially there was a 36 percent rise in the ill and because of uh, safeguard against the ball guard technology. So uh, what we can conclude in conclusion we can say the, now the, uh, every part of the globe uh, the people are studying uh, more regarding this and uh, they are making aware 
right they are uh, more easily they are uh, trying to estimate estimate the risk also over the land over the prices over the market over everything and uh, this is the indian regulation of gm crops in india ministry of agriculture moa and then uh, uh, this is department of biotechnology dbt mst which is the approval authority gas is the approval authority main approval authority of the uh, this uh, transgenic crops this is the review committee on genetic manipulation of rcgm monitoring evaluation committee mbc and, uh, and then you can see uh, they are going to conduct they are responsible for the risk calculation conducting the trials and uh, they are giving the reports and uh, if the report is there negative report is there then they are not suggested to release in the environment right otherwise they are going to be released in the environment and overall uh, the three authority are there which are directing geac if are there any change or any kind of danger or any kind of reports all right so this is the six leading corporation that is working in the uh, area of uh, uh, gmo or transgenic production monsanto dupont dow uh, syngenta bayer bsf right and this is the uh, vice they are opposing the gmo green peace organization fair trade international these are the political organization they are going to oppose every development <laughs> so biology is not a commodity biology is a science and always you have to look for the features always you have to make a good effort to introduce everything so thank you guys thank you faculty thank you all my audience students and if you have uh, any questions you can ask Any question Thank you, sir. Uh, so, from my friends, if anyone, anyone have having any queries, can ask. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, actually, it was a very informative uh, talk, and Manju sir. Uh, sir, actually, I have typed one question uh, in the chat box. Is it just my field is uh, actually biochemistry? So, I just mm -hmm. want to clarify one concept, uh, sir. Uh, you have just this. just uh, about this uh, tomato ripening uh, that we can uh, prevent the ripening of this tomato and uh, we can increase the shelf life here so being yes. biochemistry actually my idea is that uh, actually currently i am working on the enzyme and their inhibitors so likewise uh, actually i am working on the protease inhibitor so can we apply any such enzyme inhibitor uh, basically may either through the gene coding or externally up, up, by external application to enhance hmm. the shelf life of the food or to uh, because preserve because this enzyme is produced in the inactive form and as soon as there is a uh, ethylene based signaling or zibling based signaling uh, that is the ripening signal so these enzymes are activated automatically so you have to work on the internal part externally you cannot control and if you are externally applying any chemicals then you have to check their risk assessment should be there if they are not going to be harmful for the human health so any other question thank you sir thank you and sir one more question what are the risk actually what is it because india is not still going to accept the gm uh, food like uh, like bt brinjal or what was coming but it was actually banned so is there any actual risk uh, at the genetic level behind using the gm crops means actually why india is not uh, accepting is there any political is the yes, yes. real reason or any other reason this is uh, totally po politically motivated because now uh, you can see there is a gmo regulatory authority and very strict authority are there so this is the usda fda ep if they are releasing Uh, this variety means uh, all the risk assessment have been done regarding the health aspect regarding the environment regarding everything and then they are released in the uh, uh, india i suppose and india this the biotechnology department geec is going to uh, give a very small stock of the seed to the research center that is icr okay and they are now conducting the trials in their own field 
uh, and they are uh, responsible for the risk assessment in the environment, risk assessment in the soil, risk assessment in the uh, production of super weeds, right? All these are kind of myths because now there is a very strict regulatory authority. So why there is a pause? This is the question because uh, now you you know uh, this is totally politically motivated. They are they are creating a lot of disturbance to make their motive true, and they are confusing the farmers. And uh, rather than uh, because uh, government, this is uh, our government is very uh, running in democratic ways. So everyone has authority, but they are using wrong uh, way of uh, their power. Right? Being democratic country, they should understand. They should ask the GESC without asking, approaching any agency. They are directly coming to the roads, blocking all the things. They don't want to understand because they are already politically motivated. And their political bosses are deciding which varieties should be released, what should be done in the India or not. So a lot of events are recently going on. Uh, and I don't want to mention that. That is totally politically motivated by not only the Indi uh, our Indian people, but by the external, internationally politically motivated. Sorry, is sir, risk assessment is always... I want to ask likewise. Yes. Yeah, sir, biological pesticide, what is that concept? Um, so I don't know, I have heard about that. So rather than using the chemical fertilizer or chemical pesticide, uh, is there any such coming biological bio pesticide? Ah, bi yes, sir. We are also developing uh, biopesticide, and uh, uh, one faculty is there, Baljit Ma'am is there, uh, who is using a lot of biopesticide. He is uh, developing, and uh, we are using in the organic farming. Baljit Ma'am, are you there? I think she is not there, but I can yes. tell you. Yes, that, sir. Ha, Baljit Ma'am, please uh, uh, tell uh, all the audience and Ma'am uh, that. Uh, what is the bio pesticide and what form we are developing uh, for the organic farming purpose? Especially, she is asking about the organic farming. What is the bio pesticide concept apart from the transgenic and GMO? Uh, yes. Yes, bio pesticides are used in a farm, and uh, these are made from neem. We are, we are using also tobacco leaves, chilies, garlic leaves. These all inputs are used for bio pesticides. Okay, thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. Uh, actually, also, sir, in the market, uh, organic farm means organic uh, honey or whatever that. Sorry, uh, uh, so many organic things are coming, but uh, I think so they are comparatively uh, costly. So, uh, can we reduce the cost so that? Uh, in the next in coming future, we can reduce the use of the chemical fertilizer and produce the organic pest foods, whatever that. Because currently, so many organic uh, foods are available, like organic jaggery, sir. Jaggery, also. So, same is the concept that uh, they are producing all this organic jaggery by using the bio pesticide or something. Baljit, ma'am, please answer. Uh, we can produce our organic inputs on our farm only. Uh, it will not cause any anything, I think. It will be uh, very cheap uh, if we will produce our own organic products on the farm. And sir, last question. Uh, as, uh, I have been biopharmacist. I have heard about that is vaccinated banana, etc. Uh, etc. Et mm -hmm. So, is it uh, concept really will come in future? <laughs> yes, this is coming. This is coming, and uh, this is the uh, we will take at least seventy years. So we can expect in uh, 2070, <laughs> uh, but already this has been practiced in the USA. They are starting producing a vaccine in the banana. Right. Thank you, sir. It was very nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Any any uh, question from any other uh, students or faculty or colleague? We'll be happy to answer. Any question? Afreen, have you any question? I think that there was a lot of coming scientists have joined us today. So that is good. <laughs> Dr. Pooja, any question? So yes, we can conclude. Pajit ma'am, please. I think there is no question. Yes. Uh, Okay, thank you so much. 
Thank you, Dr. Asambad, for enlightening us with your knowledge. Today's lecture was full of knowledge and interesting things, and I'm pretty sure that the precious knowledge provided by Dr. Asambad will definitely help us. So, thank you so much, sir. I would also like to thank our principal, Dr. Vicky Banga, sir, and AGC authorities. Mission this session. All thankful to all my faculty members, schools, and all us for your wonderful participation. So once again, thank you, to everyone. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, all of the participants. Uh, tomorrow will be there will be lecture of uh, Dr. Abhishek Tripathi uh, on the various aspect of biopesticide. So we are linking all the concepts uh, gradually. Whatever the queries will be today, uh, next day suddenly there will be lecture over there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you again. But sir, just I want to ask one question. Like, sir, can we send you or uh, any email regarding our queries or if we have? Yes, 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 yes. Always uh, there is a DP group, WhatsApp group. You can send your queries. You can send me the personal queries. And no problem uh, uh, because we are working because uh, we are the scientists, right? What is the scientist? Scientist is not a novel creature. Rather than we are trying to answer the questions. And uh, there are a lot of questions floating among the people, among the public, among the all. Uh, uh, so uh, we should uh, we should keep asking the question. Until and unless we are not asking the question, the science will not emerge. Uh, the new uh, challenges always will be there. For example, anyone was not knowing about the uh, organic food or we are not aware of the organic food. But COVID-19 uh, told everyone that you should use the organic food because that is healthy and environment was not clean and because of lockdown you can see that the time is changing you know everyone should ask a question it may be uh, look uh, foolish question but uh, if a real scientist is understanding that concept can go and that uh, in the last day uh, i am inviting all the scientists to join and to present their views individually and uh, so that we can build a joint project for the future uh, regarding this, all these uh, modern agriculture concepts so that we can benefit because we are so much studied we are knowing so much but uh, there is no benefit of if there is no benefit to common people or uh, farmers or a kind of uh, and those stakeholders then uh, this is a wastage of time to conducting all these sessions and history so just we are like that uh, common people and below that standard also well, we are doing nothing just we are studying in the books and presenting the concept and that's it end of the things so we should uh, make our part and uh, one man army cannot uh, solve all the questions uh, we should uh, have a joint effort because everyone is enriched in uh, different expertise area, different segments of the knowledge. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Allah. For uh, I will share this PPT. Okay, if you have joined the WhatsApp group. Okay, so if anyone in uh, need uh, in the personal mail, uh, you can send me the, your mail ID. Then I will send you this uh, PPT. Thank you. And also I will send you the recording. That will be more useful than the PPT. Okay. Thank you so much.